Hello, I'm Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. This is a short video to accompany an article about the Metonic Cycle on the Mythical Ireland website. That's at mythicalireland.com and you'll find that under the Astronomy section. We are going to look at uh, the full moon at the time of winter solstice for the example that's given in the article. So instead of going back to the Neolithic, we're going to use a modern example. This is winter solstice in 2010. It's the 21st of December. The full moon, the 99.9% .9 illuminated full moon, is above Orion and between the horns of Taurus, actually located in the Milky Way. Uh, that's because the solstice positions are located in the Milky Way in the modern era, which is fascinating. This is the 21st of December 2010. Now, uh, if you're following the example given, and I'm talking about how uh, an observer in the Neolithic saw that there was a full moon on the date of winter solstice, and then counted forward from that uh, by 12 full moons in year one to find that uh, the synodic periods of the moon, that is the time it takes the moon to return from full moon to full moon, or first crescent to first crescent, or last quarter to last quarter. Uh, when you look at 12 of those periods, you find that it's shy of or short of uh, a complete year by 11 days. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go forward to 2011 on the same date, the date of winter solstice, the 21st of December in 2011. And we see that the moon is not there, but that's because we already know that uh, 12 full moons is short of a year by 11 days. So let's go back 11 days. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And we find the 99.7% illuminated moon is in Taurus. Of course, it, it's in a very, very slightly different part of the sky because it's not at the solstice position. It's 11 days off it. So he, he or she, the Neolithic observer, has begun at solstice uh, 2010 and has basically, over the course of a year, observed 12 full moons. 1, 2, 3, well, 12 passes of the moon but centering on full moon. 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and has reached this point. Twelve full moons later. Oh, it's not the solstice. And the question, of course, in the example given in the article is when will the full moon occur on winter solstice again. Now if you've read forward through the article, let's reset the dates. Let's go to the 21st of December 2010 with the full moon uh, above Orion in the Milky Way be between the horns of Taurus. If you've read through the article, you will already know this, but the answer to the question, when will the full moon occur on winter solstice again, is at the completion of a single metonic cycle. The metonic cycle, named after a Greek astronomer and mathematician from the 5th century BCE called Meton, but in fact we think it was studied in the Boyne Valley, and there's evidence for that, on the calendar stone, Curb 52 at Nouth, which will be the subject of an, another page or another article on the website accompanied by uh, videos, just like this one. So if we actually forward by 19 years, go forward in time by 19 years, that will take us to 2029. We're going to do that really quickly. Boom! There we go. A 100% illuminated full moon on the date of winter solstice. On no other year, go back, watch, no full moon in 2028. No full moon in 2027. There is a moon that is uh, waxing gibbous in 2026. And you'll know if you've looked at the table that um, the full moon, the 12th or 13th full moon, we have to add a leap full moon seven times during the 19 year cycle to get 
the lunar year to correlate as closely as possible to the solar year, but it never exactly correlates. It's always plus or minus several days. In this case, the moon is waning gibbous at 67.3% on winter solstice in 2024. In this case, it's 63.4% illuminated waxing gibbous in 2023 on the solstice. In this case, oh, that's not too bad. So that's the 11th uh, year. And if you've consulted the table, you know that in the 11th year, it is two days, uh, 136 full moons from the beginning of the count is two days short of a solar year. So there are close times when it's close in the eighth year, uh, 99 synodic lunar months or full moons is two days more than a uh, as we can demonstrate more than uh, a, a, a solar year but at no time during that 19 years is the moon exactly full on the exact date of the solstice so from 2010 when you see the full moon at winter solstice the next time you see it is 20 29. And that is, by the way, the next date upon which we will see the full moon on the winter solstice. Let's go forward, just for the sake of demonstra demonstrating, let's go forward another 19 years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's the 8th year when the moon is 2 days, the 99th moon is 2 days more than uh, a solar year. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There we go. 99.5% illuminated. Now, it's not going to be exactly perfect because remember that the synodic lunar month, uh, the time it takes uh, the moon to return from full to full again is 29 and a half days. It's actually precisely 29.53 zero six days uh, and of course uh, 19 solar years is a three uh, 19 by 365.24 is 6939.56 days whereas 235 synodic lunar months is nine six thousand 6939.68 eight days so there's a difference a slight difference there anyway that's a short demonstration of how um, the Metonic cycle works visually. We we go all the way back to uh, 2010 when there is a, a full moon on the date of winter solstice. The next time you see a full moon on the date of winter solstice is 19 years later at the completion of a single Metonic cycle.